Hello, my name is Jason Bankus of Momentum Fitness and Health. Uh, we've been discussing the effects of social media on our health. I myself have been covering phys the physical side of things, uh, such as posture and eye health. Uh, and today we have with us Sandra Montez of In Motion Counseling to cover the effects of social media on mental health. Hi, Sandra. How are you this evening? Hi, Jason. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm really good. Uh, so can you start out telling us uh, what is it you do uh, with In Motion Counseling? Absolutely. I am one of the owners and counselor at In Motion Counseling. We provide individual therapy for 12 and over, and we cover all sorts of social emotional issues that people might be struggling with, um, all the way from sadness, adjustment to life transitions, anxiety, depression, that kind of stuff. Okay, great. Uh, well, thank you for taking some time uh, in your busy schedule to meet with me today. Um, and I'd like to pretty much get right to it. Um, so can you tell me what some of the positive effects that social media can have on mental health? Social media can really help people feel like they're connected and feel like a, they're a part of the community. One of the benefits of social media is being able to build a virtual community, especially in these times where social isolation um, is, is kind of something that we have to do due to COVID. And so I feel like one of the positives that social media gives us is that connection. You know, uh, we can find groups that relate to what we like. We can find other people and follow people who have similar interests and like. And so that really helps us kind of build community and connection. It also helps us stay in touch, right? It helps us stay in touch with those uh, long lost friends, neighbors, people that we've moved away from. Um, and so it's, it's a nice way to continue to stay in contact with, with people. Cool, cool. Um, actually, uh, social media is how um, I reconnected with a uh, friend of mine from high school and uh, ended up getting married. <laughs> exactly. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so now what about, what about the other side? Is there a link uh, between depression and anxiety with social media? Absolutely. You know, I, social media can be a tool that, like most things in life, if not used in moderation, can become um, harmful. And, and one of the reasons why it's because it is um, a little bit addicting. Um, I think that the more you're on social media, you know, it, it's created to keep you hooked. It's created to keep you to want to stay engaged. And so it can be very hard to put it down or look away. Um, also, some people get very much caught up with the likes and follows that they get on their media posts. And that can also be really detrimental, especially if um, we start to connect social media posts and likes to our own um, self-esteem and wellness. And so that can be some of the kind of the darker side of social media. The other part of it is that just like we can build community, we can also see divisiveness. We can see, um, you know, how, how even like our country can be divided or our friends or family can have different views yeah. as, as like the ones that we might have. And that can be um, very distressing. Um, so the other connection to um, the dark side is, you know, the comparison effect of, you know, especially if we're athletes or if, you know, I love to run, Jason, I know you do too. Yeah. So when we see people who are running a little bit faster than us, and, you know, we, we can start to compare and be like, oh, you know, I wish I could get faster, stronger, fill in the blank, right? And so it can be really hard then to celebrate your own accomplishments if you're constantly not feeling good enough based on, on who you're following or what you're seeing on social media. Sure. Yeah. And actually that kind of leads into the next question. We do share so much ab about ourselves on social media, whether it's, you know, events or accomplishments, especially us runners, uh, you know, and of course, lots and lots and lots of opinions. Uh, what effect do disagreements or having our thoughts and, and our, sometimes our accomplishments even um, shot down? What kind of effect does that have on our mental health? 
Um, as you can imagine, I, well, for, first it depends on, you know, everybody's individual like resilience and how like serious they can take things. Um, but certainly it's, it's not pleasant, you know, if you're posting something online and someone's like, oh yeah, you know, next time try harder, or this is what I did to get faster, or you should try, you know, this or that or the other. Um, it, it, especially when we're not requesting any type of, of feedback, right? Um, sometimes when we post something, it, it, you think like, oh, maybe this person's looking for, you know, some type of answer, validation, advice, when really that might not be the case. Maybe we just want to share, right? No, absolutely. And so, and that happens also in real life communication, right? And so I think you have to be picky and choosy about the things that you share and knowing that once you put it out there, there's like no filter, there's no tone. So we also don't know the way in which things were said. Like, is this a playful tone? Was this joking? Was this anger? Like, other than our emojis, right? There's no way to really, you could really figure out the tone in which someone says something. And that can also be anxiety producing. Like, what do they mean? What did, what, what did this mean? What did they say? Like, how, how should I take this? And that can lead um, to a lot of questioning and being uncomfortable. Yeah, Com completely agree. Uh, completely agree. Um, and then actually just one last question for you is how does FOMO or fear, do people still say FOMO? Uh, fear yes, of, they do. <laughs> fear, fear of missing out. How does that come into play? Mm -hmm. mm. Well, I think the world right now has FOMO, right? Just because we're living in, in a pandemic and we're noticing how things are, are closing and shifting and changing. Um, but I do think that FOMO is a thing, right? We see other people um, living different lives or going on trips or um, hitting, hitting that mile marker, you know, that, that time, running marathons, lifting heavier than us. And so, yeah, it, it definitely um, has this thinking like, oh, I wish, I wish I could do that or I wish I could have gone there. Um, and, and we have to remember that social media is curated, right? It is, it is not a reflection of like the real nitty gritty daily lives of most people. It's the highlight reel, right? It's like the nice and shiny, like almost like the preview to the movie, right? Like to get you hooked. Um, it's not a reflection of how much people might be struggling or not the, their best days, right? It's always going to reflect like the, the newsworthiness of, of something. And so um, FOMO is definitely a thing and a way to combat that is to remember that what we see on social media is, is the highlight reels of someone's life, not necessarily, you know, them on their worst. Unless, of course, you follow someone like me who always posts their 1130 mile um, <laughs> and is super proud of that despite being in a group of very, very fast runners. Yeah, uh, I... I... <laughs> I actually haven't posted my last two runs because they've been slower than normal. <laughs> so even you, Jason, you're curating oh, what you post. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, you can feel the pressure because you're a trainer, right? Yeah. And so you want to, of course, we, we want to have our clients feel like we can help them. And the same with me, right? With in motion counseling, like I'll post things about health, fitness, mental health, um, but we, we all have sad days. We all mm -hmm. have, you know, gloomy days. Um, not going to post about those on social media as much because what I know my followers are looking for techniques, tips, you know, things to, to help yep. them with these things. And so we just hope that the, our consumers and followers and friends know that, you know, there's a reason why we don't post everything. Right. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Well, uh, thank you uh, so much for your time and for your insight today. Um, it, it certainly seems like there is both positive and negative uh, effects with social media on our health and especially on our mental health. Now, uh, can you tell us if someone wants to get a hold of you uh, for your services, how can they do that? Super easy. Um, drop us an email at info at inmotioncounseling.com. Um, we have a really quick turnaround right now. We have three therapists that are available um, to see people, teens, adults. Um, we see, um, yeah, any, anybody that needs help can reach out. They can visit our website 
um, inmotioncounseling.com. They can read our bios, get to know us, see um, who might be a good fit. And again, if anybody has any questions or even wants to continue the, the dialogue, more than happy to uh, continue to have this conversation. All right. All right. Well, thanks again. Um, and for those of you watching today, if you need help with your physical health, be sure to visit findingyourmomentum.com. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And of course, if you don't know by now, uh, we're also the creators of Regain, which of course, Sandra is so graciously um, advertising for me right now. So look for Momentum Fitness Companies as well as Regain Sports Strength Online. So, all right. Well, again, thank you very much. And uh, I guess we'll see you for the run tomorrow. It's my pleasure. See you on the run. Thank you so much. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Take care. You too.